All right, thank you very much, Tony. And time now for our roundtable section where we talk a little bit about one significant issue. And we really do have a roundtable here. Mm -hmm. Kaylee Nix joins me as well, but we have an all-star panel uh, here as well. We have uh, Kerry Jablonski, CEO of Trucker Tools, joining us, uh, I believe, from, from Chicago, and also Peter Rensler, CEO of Metaphora, who is joining us from the moon. Where are you, Peter? <laughs> I love it. It looks like you're like car camping. Like it looks like you've got like this like setup, and I think it's great as far as like the perspective goes. Right, you're not backlit at all. It looks it looks really great with the area. And Carrie, thank you for joining us. Also, I'm excited to have you on uh, because you took over as CEO at Trucker Tools not too long ago, and you've now kind of taken over in this really exciting time for the industry. And give us a little bit of background before we get into today's discussion about your role now at Trucker Tools. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. It's great to be here. So for those of you who don't know, Trucker Tools is uh, a leading digital freight matching and load tracking platform for brokers. So we help you scale your brokerage by enabling you to become basically a digital broker in real time um, and access our massive carrier network that we have engaged every single day on our mobile app. I'm really excited to be taking over um, the CEO role at Trucker Tools right now, especially as the market's turning for carriers because we really believe that our platform, which is free for carriers and allows them to access hundreds of brokers that they might not have worked with before, is a really critical tool that they can use to get through these tough times and find um, and manage business and relationships uh, as the market turns. So let's start off uh, with kind of this overarching question. We have, of course, this chart that shows that a lot of truckers have, or a lot of, of, of fleets have come into this market over the course. So you see the, the, the basic trend there. We're hovering between 5,000 and 8,000 new fleets for many, many years, uh, kind of touching that 10,000 mark a while, and all of a sudden things just skyrocket at this point, and that gives us the power to essentially put on a have a freight recession when you have too many too much capacity perhaps in the market um, what is one thing right now for these small carriers and talking about how, what small carriers can do in terms of of being ready for and getting through this what is one thing you would want carriers to do right now that can help them start to get through what is going to be a tough time for a lot of people Carrie, let's start with you great get scrappy with where you're finding loads and fuel. You might be reliant on a single load board. You might have your go-to place where you find and book loads. Throw that all out the window right now and try more. Get on different apps, try out Trucker Tools, for example, and, and get scrappy, um, not only with where you're finding loads, but also where you're finding fuel. Another thing I do want to mention too is that we do have a fuel optimizer in our app that helps you find real-time fuel prices so that as you're planning a route, you might decide to go 10 miles out of your way because there's a place where you can get fuel for 10, 20 cents per gallon cheaper. And those are the kind of decisions that might seem trivial on the margins that are going to help you be scrappy and get through these times. And I love that scrappiness, right? It's about getting down deep in the trenches and not being afraid to do the really hard work to get this to survive in a tough time. Peter, one of the things that you talk about a lot is being intentional with your connection building. And I think that that's something that's really reliable and really important for these smaller carriers too, is more than ever, is being intentional with those relationships and intentional with maintaining the relationships that they made when the market was good. Can you talk about that as a strategy for trying to survive, whether that's you as a smaller carrier saying, you know what, hey, we did really good delivering this freight for you. Let's keep it this way. Yeah, appreciate the prompt. And I just realized I was on mute before. So I'm <laughs> in Emporia, Kansas, uh, taking advantage of, of work from anywhere. I'm in, the, I'm in a camper van. Uh, I'm doing a 100-mile gravel bike race tomorrow. Um, so I'm, I'm working out of a mobile office. But Kaylee, great, great question. Um, you know, I, I, I think really, you know, to your point around kind of having honest conversations with your partners and your customers, I, I think one of the most important things you can do right now is really understand what is profitable business for you and then be able to communicate that to your customers because it gives you pricing power. I think that there's a lot of value in actually um, in actually like really understanding your network and where, where it's profitable for you to move your freight and being really intentional about how you spend your time and energy and, where, and ultimately where you move your trucks. Peter, let's talk about game planning. Let's say you're an owner-operator and you are, uh, you've are you got a small fleet. 
you're looking at this hard time right now. Give me a game plan. What do you want to see your company do over the course of the next six months to a year to get through this hard time? I think. Yeah, so I think. I, I think. Oh sorry. oh, sorry. Was that me or Carrie? Sorry. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Peter. We'll get we'll get Carrie in just a second. Okay. Um, I mean, my thought is focus on being easy to work with, and 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 be kind of a creative frictionless experience for your customers. I think that's one of the the most undervalued um, uh, kind of like value adds or competitive advantages that's uh, currently in the market is there are so many, there are so many companies that make it difficult to work with. And I, and I'm with, I mean, I agree with Carrie's point around, like as a carrier, you want to be visible on multiple platforms as well. You also want to make sure that you're connected to multiple visibility providers so that it's easier for a potential new customer to work with you. Um, I think, I think as much as you can do to create a frictionless customer experience, will make it easier for customers to say yes to you right now. Carrie, go ahead. Yeah, just actually to build off Peter's point right there, um, you can think about it in, in a tough economy. There's two ways to go. You can either cut expenses or grow revenue. And I would say what you need to do as an owner off right now is find ways to increase your revenue, get scrappy, as I mentioned, um, and think about where, how can I look at this tough market as a way to explore some new opportunities that I might be too busy or too swamped to in a hot market. There's a lot of research, I think, outside of the trucking space that show that businesses that best survive recessions don't actually cut their marketing budget. They just change the way they spend it so that they can explore some new top line uh, growth drivers during different economic contexts. So I think that the way that would apply to an owner op is look at this as an opportunity to experiment with some new lanes. Maybe think about um, hauling a load at a less than ideal price, but it will get you in with a broker who you've been trying to work with for a while. And, and think about this as a way to explore new opportunities that um, would otherwise not be top of mind for you. Blythe Brumleaf would be incredibly proud of that plug for not cutting your marketing budget. That's exactly what we talked with her yesterday about or Wednesday about. And Carrie, I want to stick with you a little bit, bit on this next question, talking about the owner operator who's maybe jumping ship out of running solo and now looking at joining a fleet, at least to survive the tough times. Do you think that this type of strategy is something that could really work and could be beneficial for these groups that are really just trying to keep their truck running because the truck isn't running, nobody's making money, right? Do you think that this is a strategy that they could use and then maybe see an out if the market takes another upturn? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's a great call depending on everyone's individual situation. And I think what kind of also building on Peter's point earlier, what is really important if you do decide to join a fleet is still focus on building those relationships, both within your fleet and with customers so that when and if you are ready to take a leap and go back at it again on your own, you're, you're building on relationships that you've been nurturing for years through these tough times, as opposed to starting all over again. Peter, let's, I'm going to piggyback off of what uh, Katie said just a moment ago about perhaps checking out some new lanes and so forth. And I'll preface this question with a quick story, and I'm not going to name any college football teams here because um, I don't want to get any cards and letters about this. But there was a college football team at one point that lost to a rival in a, in a game they should have won. The coach was in the locker room at the end of the game. They're about to go play a big rival who is going to be very tough, and he's trying to get his team fired up for practice the next week, and they're just not feeling it. And finally, he asked his team captain, what's going on? And guy stands up in front of his entire team and says, coach, without giving up any, any locations, coach, we don't lose there. So with that, do you act in the future with the confidence of what you've learned in the past and go with your gut? Or perhaps do you try and go on for someone else's proven strategy that perhaps you don't feel may not necessarily work in your eyes? You know, I I mean, I'll, I'll borrow a little bit from Carrie's point earlier about like, th this is the time to try new things. Now, I, I don't think that that means that you want to completely change your entire business strategy. Um, but now is definitely the time to get creative and scrappy and figure out, you know, where can you where can you add value to your cost to potential new markets or customers or service lines. So I, I, I think it's a bit of both. I think that there's um, what, what I would suggest doing, though, is taking a hard look at your business and identifying areas that you've been trying to penetrate and not getting traction, ruthlessly cut those, focus on the core, and then start exploring other areas where, where you may be able to make new, um, where you may be able to make new progress.
Choosing to do something like that is, of course, like high risk, high reward. So I guess, Peter, staying with you, when you're looking at, even with Metaphor, guys, as a consulting agency, when you guys are going in and you're trying to take these companies to the next level in their business strategy, how do you guys counsel them into the high risk versus high reward decisions? And what does that look like when you're talking about both an upside market and a downside market? Yeah, so like, I, I think it's a balance of both. I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't know if there are gamblers on the call, but, and I wouldn't consider myself a big gambler, but when I, when I play roulette, I tend to throw a couple chips in the, in the middle. Um, and then I'll put like some on black. And the way that I'm looking at that is, you know, there, there's a 50, 50 chance that I get black. Um, and then there's kind of like the high risk, high reward on, on playing the, on playing the field. And I think that that's the way that you look at, at expanding your business strategy in these markets is that you know, you, you do want to have, there is benefit to having some predictable, reliable revenue. And that's where you want to double down on the really strong customer relationships that you've had. Um, but then likewise, you want to complement that with, with, a, with sprinkling in some higher risk, um, higher reward opportunities. I, the, the biggest mistake that we see companies make is that when they invest in higher risk, higher reward opportunities, they don't, they don't make a point to define metrics for success and then ruthlessly manage to those. Um, so, so what happens is you get the sunk cost fallacy where you continue pursuing a new customer relationship, even though they've said no to you a hundred times. There's definitely something to be said about persistence, but there's also something to be said about recognizing at what point you're, you're simply not succeeding, cutting, cutting bait, and then moving on with, uh, with, with something else. There's an opportunity cost to continuing to pursue something that isn't working. Terry, let me move back to you. Um, you know, we've had a lot of influences in this uh, current market. Of course, we've got coming off of the pandemic, we've got inflation, we've got gas prices, we've got all these headaches uh, that uh, owner operators and, and fleet operators have to deal with. As we get through this, and I, I asked this to some of our, our colleagues here in the building um, yesterday, uh, as we get through this in terms of the economy, do you think that what will emerge out of this when we get to a new sense of normal, if you will, that there will be maybe a different perspective? Perspective on how we handle this and in terms of the owner operator slash small fleet owner is there a different way of doing business that's going to perhaps come to the forefront as we emerge from this economic downturn and into something more positive yeah so I think first of all I, I think there's probably no new normal ever we're always just going to be in these volatile times the world moves faster gets more connected so that means that in, in this context, owner operators are going to have to continue to get smarter and get scrappier and get more data driven, as Peter mentioned, with how they're running their businesses. I think the, the big thing that we're going to see from this downturn is owner, oper owner operators take advantage of a lot of the technology that's emerged over the last couple of years when the market has been very favorable for small carriers that they might not have needed to use or been inclined to use because times were so rich. Um, instead, you, you'll see, you know, Trucker Tools, just one example, there are a ton of digital bookings, digital freight matching platforms that have emerged and are seeing really great traction right now. So I think you're going to see the owner operators become more and more digital first, especially as, um, you know, Gen Z becomes owner operators and we're going to see more and more digital natives uh, out on the roads driving through these times. Really quickly before we let you guys go, I want to just get a quick yes or no from both of you guys. Do we see the risk of mass consolidation with large enterprise fleets and legacy companies snapping up owner operators in this time? Or is there still a chance for owner operators, small fleets to survive? Just yes or no, carry you first. Yes, owner operators can survive. Peter, what do you think? Yes. Love it. That's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Roundtable. Great to have you. Peter, good luck on your bike race. 100 yep. miles on gravel bike, not an easy thing to do. We'll check in with you guys soon. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for having thank us on. Thank you. And we'll take a short break. Be back and wrap up the show right after this.